Hi, I'm Donovan with another episode of Azure Friday. We're here with Dave to talk about Azure Batch Rendering. Welcome to the show, Dave. Thanks, Donovan. Good to be here. So what do you do here at Microsoft? I'm an engineering manager uh, for a team in New Zealand. Oh, working cool. on the Big Compute team as part of Azure. Awesome. So tell me all about Azure Batch Rendering, what it is and why do we need it? Yeah, so Azure Batch Rendering, it's built on top of Azure Batch, okay. Azure Batch Service, which is designed for doing you know, massive scale parallel processing. Uh, and rendering is a great example of one of those workloads where we can easily take individual frames and, and send them to separate virtual machines to be rendered. Okay, so rendered for what? Is this like for video games, movies? What are we talking it could, about? It could be any of, any of those. And so the rendering process is about taking the 3D model and the scene and all the geometry and textures, and then calculating all the lighting effects and gotcha. everything, and producing that final image, whether it's a still image or a, an animation. Oh, awesome. So, yeah. tell me, how does it work? So, how do I get going? Do I have to interact directly with, with the Azure Batch, or do I use the same tools I use today, like 3D Studio Max, or how, do I, how does that work? Yeah, there, there are a few different options that customers can use to interact or integrate with the service. Okay. Um, so, we've got the Azure CLI, and we've got our SDKs. Um, but what I want to actually show today is, is a bit of a walk for some of the interactive options that okay. we have for, for running jobs and so forth. Love to see it. Cool. So, firstly, I want to flick over here to, uh, this is the Autodesk Maya application, and this is really popular in the, in the field for creating these 3D models and um, these scenes. And then this here is an example of where we've got a, a plugin that sits right inside of the application, so it's a fully integrated experience. Got it. And I think it's a great example of where we can bring the power of Azure right to the to the end users and the environment that they're used to. Yeah, I love the fact that I don't have to go learn something new. I can just keep using the tool exactly. that I love today. Totally, totally. Awesome. And this will do things like you know uh, detect all of the uh, the assets okay. uh, that my scene requires, and then every time I submit a job, it's going to check whether any of those need to be updated or you know uploaded to the cloud. Okay. Um, so there's a bunch of smarts in there to make it really easy to to do stuff end to end. Awesome. But what I want to primarily focus on today is a new application that we released recently called Batch Labs, and so Batch Labs is a cross-platform desktop app uh, for managing batch environments, and uh, we've got a whole bunch of uh, features in here to help with running rendering jobs. Okay, cool. So first, a couple of concepts. Uh, in Batch, we have the, the notion of these pools, pools of virtual machines. And so here we have a CPU pool. Um, there's got a, a D5 instances, which are 16 core, pretty grunty machines. <laughs> but what's cool is we also have a GPU pool here. And wow. so these are NC6 instances. They've okay. uh, got NVIDIA K80 cards, which are general uh, purpose okay. uh, processing units. And uh, I've got 100, 100 of those. Uh, and if we go into create a new pool, I just want to call out a couple of uh, options or features here. Uh, one thing is we have this notion of dedicated nodes as well as low priority nodes. Okay. And so this is something we announced a little bit earlier this year. Um, I think it's still in public preview um, where customers can get access to unutilized capacity in Azure within a region. Okay. and get that for a massive discount. I see. Up to 80% discount oh, on, wow. on uh, the sticker price. Um, and so the downside is that if the demand increases in that, that region, then we might have to take that capacity back. Um, but the cool thing with like rendering workloads and other batch workloads is you, know, you might lose a bit of work, but the service will schedule that, that work to another virtual machine and get the job, get the task done. Okay, so even um, before I start in the application of my choice, I would have had to come and first set up a pool yeah. to which I'm going to send my batch jobs to. And that's what you're showing us now. That's what this, this interface is all about. Got it. And, and you could do this from the plugin inside Maya as well. Okay. So that's a, you know, fully featured, um, but just showing you know, the example Another of option. how we can do it here. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And so if uh, we do need to take some of that capacity back, those low priority nodes, then the batch service is constantly going to try and seek to that target again. Okay. So when you know, the capacity becomes available again, I can get those VMs back and, Perfect. and life is good. And so for workloads where you, you know you don't have to get them back in a, like a you know don't have an urgent timeline, then this is you know massive cost savings are potentially uh, available here, gotcha. with eighty percent discount. So the other thing we have here is this uh, graphics and rendering option for uh, the the VM image type that we want to deploy. And so this is something we put out there as a convenience thing. Uh, we have pre-provisioned an image, a VM image with all of the latest versions of Maya, 3ds Max, Arnold, oh, okay. V-Ray, a bunch of the different rendering apps. Uh, and so it's a really easy way to get started, kick the okay. tires. Um, if you need a specific version or versions of these different apps, then you can uh, set up your own custom image 
um, or we have a container solution, container-based solution oh, coming awesome. soon, which will sort of offer the best of both worlds. You okay. Know, flexibility as well as sort of, sure. you know, not having to build So I provide yourself. you my image that has all the rendering tools I want, I want and then you're going to be able to then scale that up and do batch exactly. jobs against my own image. Yep. yep. Got it. If we select one of these, uh, this application licenses feature shows up. And so uh, this is really the most exciting and defining feature of the whole thing where we can actually do pay-per-use licensing wow. of these commercial apps and it's fully integrated into all the Azure, Azure billing system. So when I use this, I'll just see additional line items in my Azure bill uh, for the software that I'm using. I so was that wondering how, that was my next question and yeah. I think she answered that. So I don't have to first purchase 3D Studio Max myself. Exactly. I can actually just buy it on a per need basis right here. Exactly. And awesome. so this was always the big blocker with customers using for the cloud sure. is like, okay, I can spin up another 100 or 1,000 VMs, but I've got to have additional licenses to, to run the software. So sure. So the economics sort of pretty, uh, you know, fell apart pretty quickly with that model. So we'll close out of here because we've already got our, our pools that we need. Uh, the next thing I want to show is this uh, data management uh, capability we have in here. And so I can upload a, or create these file groups and upload assets from my computer. And so this is an example here. We've got um, all of these assets for this loft uh, scene. Uh, and so that's everything I'm going to need to render that particular uh, particular scene. Okay. And then I'll create another file group here where I'm going to have the uploads, uh, the outputs uploaded to. And so okay. th these just resolve to containers and blob storage. Okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah. So it's just a convenient way to upload upload the data. And then the last option here is this marketplace of, of applications that we've enabled. And so this has sort of grown over time. Uh, and one example here is 3ds Max, yep. which uh, you mentioned earlier. Uh, and so if I click in there, I can see a whole bunch of different uh, job types or actions um, particular for that, that application, whether it's running with CPU or GPU or yep. using the distributed rendering capability uh, that it supports. And so if you're wondering where this list of application comes from, uh, well, GitHub, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a repository here with, uh, called Batch Labs, uh, <laughs> Batch Labs Data. Sure. Uh, and so this has uh, got a folder here called NCJ, and that stands for No Code Jobs. And okay. That's our nickname for batch templates, which gotcha. is what uh, we're using to enable these applications. Okay. Uh, and so there's some guidance here on how to enable an application using these templates. Uh, and then we've got all of these ones that we saw inside the application. And so if we click into 3ds Max, we can see all of the uh, job types that we, we saw listed in Batch Labs yep. before. And if we click inside this uh, one here that we're going to run, uh, we've got these three templates. Um, th the pool template uh, is as a way to encapsulate uh, all of the information about how to actually set up one of these pools that we just saw before. Okay. And so it really simplifies the whole creation experience. And is this is this open to where I can contribute new job types and exactly. things like that as well? Exactly. And so the idea is that we want to you know help sort of energize the community to uh, easily enable these applications. Awesome. They can sort of copy paste and modify sure. it to, to what they need. And it's not just for rendering. This is other uh, verticals like uh, financial services and engineering and, and anything. I see. So, okay. um, so it's very sort of open and, and flexible. Um, and so yeah, some of the benefits are because we know this is a, a GPU job that we're talking about here, we can restrict it to a particular set of VM types okay. or sizes because we know these are the particular ones that work well for, for GPU rendering. Yep. Um, and then there are other things like you know installing the NVIDIA drivers and all that sort of jazz. And so if we go back to Batch Labs and click on uh, this, there it is, uh, and go to, we can create a pool here or use an existing pool. So just to contrast with the experience we saw before with all of those options about how to create a pool, here we've got like three inputs. What's your pool name? How many nodes do you want? And we've only got a list of uh, the NC. Based types. on the JSON we just saw from Exactly. GitHub. So it really simplifies the experience awesome. because we know a bit more about what we're trying to do. Uh, if we uh, continue with one of the existing pools we have, a GPU pool, we can see it's got a whole bunch of inputs to submit this job. And again, this is uh, driven by the uh, the JSON template, the job template, and so it defines the parameters that we need for the job, um, you know, the scene file that we sure. need, the file group, and, and so forth, um, start frame, end frame, resolution, you know, all these things. Everything you can imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to need to configure to make sure you get what you need on the outside. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, there's a bit more detail about how we generate, uh, you know, the tasks, using these task factories, and that just sort of sweeps over the start frame to the end frame. Okay. And generates a task for each one. Perfect. Um, and then, you know, this is the command line that we're going to sure. execute. So, yeah. It's almost like a build job. Yeah, very, very similar, yeah, okay. defining what's actually going to happen on the nodes.
Awesome. Cool. And so we'll step through this. We can select our assets file group, um, select the, the scene file that we want to render, which is this jobby here. Say buttons lower than it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Get the guys onto that. <laughs> <laughs> render from uh, frame one to frame 100. Uh, and then the resolution like we saw, and then we want the outputs to go into the Got outputs it. file group. So, you know, could, we could put the outputs back into the same If you wanted to, but this yeah. is going to make it easier for me to identify what's been done. Exactly. So this is going to go off and run. I'm going to be able to monitor this. When it's done, I get to download my final asset, which might be, like you said, an, an animation or a still image of the 3D rendered part. Yeah, my, most customers, they just want to get the individual frames out, and then they might do some post-processing on those frames before they uh, combine them into a into an animation okay. like a video file. Um, but actually, if you look back at the marketplace, there's an FFmpeg job here. So you could actually stitch these things together very easily. And Using batch as well. A, yeah, create an animation from your images. And because the data is already in blob storage, you know, hmm. it's, it's all sort of flows together quite nicely. Very cool. Um, and obviously, you can do this all programmatically through the SDKs as well. Um, Absolutely. So yeah. Cool. And so with our job submitted, we can see uh, we've got a, a hundred uh, tasks and there's little counts or statuses at the top here. So they're all running because they've got a hundred uh, GPU nodes. Sure. Yeah, 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 pretty all cool. All in parallel. Awesome. Yeah, uh, pretty hard to go and buy them and put them <laughs> under, your, under your desk at home. Yeah. So sure. <laughs> the true power of the cloud is that I don't have to do that anymore. Exactly. Infinite scale for me right Exactly. Here. You got it. Um, and so I can click into each of these tasks and see what's going on below. I'll click to one of the uh, jobs that's completed before. Okay. Um, and click into one of the tasks and we can see uh, the files that are actually on the, the virtual machine where that task ran. Okay. Um, and so, for example, I can see the, the final image, the rendered image that was produced. Wow. Um, and I can see like the standard out and standard error. So like if the image didn't come out as I expected, maybe a texture is missing or something, I can go and look in the standard error or standard out and, you know, should be able to see the line here saying can't on. find this particular file or something like that. Absolutely. So it makes it pretty easy to, to see uh, what's happening. Perfect. Cool. And then if we switch back to our, our pool here, we should be able to see that, yeah, so there's got this nice little heat map and we can see all of the nodes are, are busy, you know, processing that job we just submitted. Um, the, the hatched or cross-hatch um, lines indicate the low priority nodes. So we've got a combination of I the see. low priority and, and gotcha. dedicated here, um, which is pretty cool. Awesome. And then the outputs, we find them in our output folder. So the job name and then, you all know, the, images the outputs. Cool. Fantastic. So that is pretty much how the service works. And then, as I mentioned, you know, whether you want to use the SDK to integrate with this with your own queuing system or your own, you know, on-premises pipeline, then you know that's what a lot of customers do. But yeah, hopefully, with all the options we've got, then and it's all easy. available today. Yep. And you can use it. That's right. And so uh, it's available today. Um, V-Ray is uh, one of the renderers is still in limited preview. Okay. So if you want to use that, test it out, then get in contact with us and we can whitelist your batch count. Okay. Um, but then, yeah, otherwise we've got Maya, 3ds Max, and Arnold, and uh, GA. Okay. Uh, general availability. Um, and we're adding other renderers as we, as we go along. One last question. So yeah. if I'm using one of those tools, how do I get that plugin into the tool? Is that from a free marketplace? How do I get, the, for example, the 3D Studio Max? How did I integrate the Azure plugin into that? Yeah, so there's, um, uh, on GitHub, there's, of course, everything's on GitHub. Yep. So Azure Batch Maya, gotcha. there's the plugin there, and there's uh, instructions there for how to install, uh, install it. it and get it going into, into Maya. Uh, there's also a really good uh, walkthrough article we've got here, which sort of talks about all of the, the different options for getting the applications or the software into the, the system, as well as for submitting the jobs as well. So hopefully there's enough guidance here for uh, people to figure things out, and we're going to post those links at the bottom of, uh, of the show as well. Well, hopefully. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we're learning all about Azure Batch Rendering here on Azure Friday.